welcome to another horrendous episode of Velvet Owl Watches Movies So You Don't Have To. And this week, quite possibly the worst movie ever. Er, I don't know, I don't... In terms of quality, I don't know if how we're on the scale of worst movies ever this falls. But it is one of the biggest box office bombs of all time. It is... The Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure. So, I don't know if the Oogie Loves is, like, a show or there's something. Like, was it popular that they get, like, top billing like that? It's not just, like, the Oogie Loves or the Oogie Loves movie. It's the Oogie Loves in the Big Balloon Adventure. Which makes you think, like, you know, the title is the Big Balloon Adventure. And it stars the Oogie Loves that we all should know. I don't know. I don't know who the Oogie Loves are. They're just very scary looking puppets, as far as I can tell from the poster. But, yeah, uh, in terms of release, on a $20 million budget, which is kind of insane as far as, I think, like a kid's movie based on a not really well-known franchise. If it even is a franchise, that's insane. But what it made in theaters is, where is it? Uh, oh, at first I saw it on the Wikipedia page, $102,564. And I was like, wow, that is a hugely massive failure. Uh, but apparently, I don't know, I think that was just like for the first day, which is still low. But total, grand total was $1,000,000. $65,907. Uh, that's not as impressive, though. As far as, like, bombs go, like... I mean, yeah, it lost, like, $19 million. But come on, I think there's bigger bombs. So, ah. Uh, I, I was really hoping for... That it only made, like, six figures. Total. That would have been great. I mean, according to this... It was a per theater average of $47 for, like, opening weekend, which is, like, just... So if you figure, like, okay, this was 2012, so let's estimate that tickets were about maybe $10, I think. I don't know. I stopped watching... I stopped going to movies well before this. Because they were getting too fucking expensive. And I think now they're like $50 a ticket. I don't know. But let's say probably about $10 a ticket. So that means on average only four or five people would go into a theater to see this. But you know there had to have been more. So that means like when you think about it. There had to have been theaters where no one showed up. And also... Yeah, actually, if you think about it even further, like, okay, like, there had to have been at least two showings <laughs> per theater. You know, like, the 6 o'clock show and the 8 o'clock show, or whatever. So, $47, so we've decided, what, like, four to five people total for the day? So that means, like, each screening had probably about two to three people. Which, um, it's amazing. Which, uh, actually, when I went to see Joe's apartment in the theater, I think there was about, like, three other people. So, it happens. It happens sometimes you go to a movie theater and there's really no one else there watching the movie because they're like, ah, fuck it, we don't want to see this movie. And so, and so it goes. But... Joe's Apartment was a good movie. And all of you are fucking missing out. You don't understand the pure, brilliant genius that was the Joe's Apartment movie. It was a fucking great movie. This movie, I don't know. It's got Oogie Loves. And I think they have to go get a balloon. Um, Okay, the description is when the Oogie Loves plan a special surprise for their pal Schlufli. Schlufli? Oh, man, this is... A terrible name. S-C-H-L-U-U-F-Y. Shloofy. It's birthday. 
they lose five magical balloons that they must recover by party time. So they're magical balloons. That's why they can't just go to the store and buy more balloons, I guess. So where am I at? This is too long of an intro. Let's press play. Oh, what the hell am I in for? So we meet the Oogies. Or the Oogie Loves. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure if they're Oogie or Oogie Loves. What what kind of species are they? I'll call them Oogie because I don't want to add an extra syllable in every time I talk to them because they introduce themselves and I don't give a fuck what their names are. We've got Green Oogie, who's like super smart and he's a nerd. You can tell he's a nerd because he's got glasses. And then we've got. The yellow Oogie, and she's a girl, and she's also cute and adorable, and apparently she speaks lots of languages, including animal. Aw, isn't that nice? And then we've got purple Oogie, who he's the cool badass guy, because he's kind of got a faux hawk. He's, he's definitely cool, and he plays the drums. So that's how you know he's extra super cool. So, and they're introducing us to the rules of this film. Yes, there are rules, because this is apparently a film that, it's kind of like Dora the Explorer uh, and Teletubbies and all those dumb, like, shows that tell kids what to do to interact, except, oh my god, it's gonna have probably none of the educational value of Dora the Explorer or Blue's Clues, or even of Teletubbies. Because I cannot be convinced that there is any educational value to Teletubbies, even to a six-month-old. The, the only thing a six-month-old kid is going to learn from watching Teletubbies is to hate life. So maybe there is educational value in the Teletubbies. Teach kids right away, early on, that, yeah, life sucks. And you're going to have to deal with it. So, but, you know... This is a movie theater, so kids are going to get to do what they usually don't do. So stuff like they're going to clap and sing along. And they're going to help the Oogie Loves in their adventure. I don't know how yet, but we got two cues. When you see butterflies fly about, that means it's time to get up off your seats. And I guess that's when you dance and clap and all that. And then when you see the turtles, it's time to sit back down. And they give us a demonstration... And they sing the Oogie Love theme song, which is like, Oogie Love, Oogie Love. And I think that was the only, those are all the lyrics, because unless you're going to have the lyrics on screen, how are kids going to sing along? But if you just repeat Oogie Love over and over, like kids will be like, ah, oh, Oogie Love, yeah. Um, so I think it's probably for the best that... Oogie Loves never became popular. Because how many parents would want to blow their brains out from their kids wanting to sing Oogie Love over and over? Quite a few, I imagine. So now the movie starts in earnest. And not like Ernest goes to camp. But the importance of being earnest. Which... I mean, that was a pun on the word earnest and the name earnest. Why am I discussing Oscar Wilde? Because I have to watch the Oogie Loves. And wouldn't you want to discuss anything else? So it's morning. The Oogies are asleep when the windows start singing. Yes. A woman's face just shows up in the window. And apparently her name is Wendy. Get it? Because she's a window. And it's kind of like the girl's name, Wendy. Oh! oh, I cried. And she's singing. But we don't get any butterflies, so I guess we're not supposed to get up from our seats and dance just yet. And there's no, like, sing-along words, so I guess we're not supposed to sing along this either. We're just supposed to listen to her saying, like, wake up! And now I want to say, wake up, little Susie. Or wake me up before you go-go. No! She does none of that. It's some other dumb wake, wake up song. And just, I can't remember how it goes because they didn't put the words on this screen. So I don't know. I'm not supposed to sing along to it. But the Oogies wake up and apparently they've got a pillow friend named Shroofy. And it's his birthday. And it, 
they're going to have a big birthday surprise. Luckily, Shloofy is a heavy sleeper and did not list here purple oogly just yet at our like, it's a surprise birthday party today! And then Wendy is like, well, why don't you look through my window and see what you can see? And then this song we're supposed to sing along with because the words are on there. And it's like, Windy window, what do you see? One, two, three, fuck off. Okay, that fuck off part, wasn't it? How awesome would that have been? And I'm kind of wondering, would it have been better or worse to see this in the theater? Because it would have been really fucking annoying, probably, to, like deal with like all these kids like singing and dancing along with it but knowing that like there was almost no one at the movie theaters for this just it'd be kind of like i'd be curious to see like audience reaction as they're just kind of sitting there like what the fuck are we watching and seeing absolutely no kid get up and sing or just one kid's getting up and sing that's the thing, if there was just one kid, would he get up and sing? Being the only one and just feeling like an idiot. Or they'd be like, ah, fuck all of you. You know what, I don't even have to listen to the turtles to sit back down. I'm standing up and I'm clapping at one, two, three, windy window, what do you see? Oogie love, oogie love. Fuck. When is this film going to get its cult revival of being like Rocky Horror Picture Show where people just go to just kind of sing along and just throw shit at the screen? That would be awesome. So the Oogies are watching the scene through the window and there's a vacuum cleaner who's kind of just rolling along the way down the street in the woodland area. They kind of live in a woodland area, forest type thing. Which you would just imagine, because all magical creatures do not live in the city. But this vacuum, I'm kind of scared, because he has a cord, he has a plug. He's not plugged into anything. So how is he, like, moving? Like, him singing and dancing, like, okay. Or attempting to dance, because he can only roll around. I'd be like, ah, you know, it happens. But he doesn't have any power going to him. And, you know... I thought that was going to be, like, the one thing that's going to protect us from our, like, (laughs) equipment and robots and things gaining sentience against us. Is that they're going to need power sources. And that we could deny the power source. And then that way they could not take over. But now I know. Vacuums can take over. They gain sentience. They are going to take over our world. And we can't unplug them. (sighs) Damn robot sentient vacuum cleaners and the vacuum cleaner's name is jay edgar get it because he's a hoover vacuum so he's a jay edgar hoover you know you gotta throw a couple of jokes in for the adults that's that's how these kid things work um i think even the adults probably just growing like oh and but you're not supposed to because there's nothing on the screen telling you it's time to groan at the joke but he's all happy and he's singing and there's some mice and a peacock for some reason. But then there's the sound of a train and he gets scared like, oh no, I'm going to get run over by a train. But we don't see a train. There's no train anywhere like within 500 miles. So I don't know what the fuck he got scared of. But unfortunately, J. Edgar, he was carrying the balloons for the party. And he got scared and let the balloons go. Oops. And he goes to see the oogies and he's like, I lost the balloons. And bad news, because those are the last balloons in Oogie Love Land, or whatever fucking land they live in. Like, oh no, so I guess we're going to have to try and get those balloons. But that's okay, because we got homing beacons. Yeah. I, I would think that, like, I forget, like, homing beacon GPS type thing. But I would think that only homing beacon would only work if the balloon had a homing beacon in it for you to track um whatever it's oogie world it's oogie world we just live in it but the oogies are gonna go on their own j edgar feels like he should go too but they're like no you're just gonna slow us down 
because you're a vacuum cleaner. Besides, you can just hang out here with Windy the Window. Or Windy Window. Whatever. But you can see it. J. Edgar totally wants to fuck the window. And I don't know the logistics for vacuum cleaner window sex. But damn, I want that movie. I want a movie where a vacuum cleaner fucks a window. I just want to see how it's possible. How can it happen? Once again, the Velvet Owl Podcast. The only place where you'll hear things like, I want to see a vacuum cleaner fuck a window. Not my fault. Blame the Oogie Loves. Um... Where am I going? I'm just so like distracted by this vacuum cleaner window sex. But the Oogies are just like, okay, we're gonna go off. But J. Edgar's like, no, you can't go over yet, because, you know, first you need to get dressed. And they're like, okay, let's get dressed. And they all get dressed with the magic tube that goes over them and instantly changes them into clothes. But purple... Oogie, because he's like the badass, he doesn't have a belt, and his pants are too baggy, because he's a badass, and I guess this is like mid-90s badass, who just got baggy pants, and they're like, okay, you don't have to wear a belt, but, you know, your pants are going to fall, and each time, we're going to sing, along with the kids, because we're going to give them the words to sing, we're going to sing, pull your pants up. I've already forgotten how the song goes. These songs are so fucking unmemorable that, like, two seconds after watching it, I've forgotten how these songs go. Um, although, to be fair, I just have bad short-term memory. But, so they're going to sing, you know, to, for him to pull his pants up every time they fall. And they're going to laugh. Ha ha ha! Your pants fell. And Purple Oogie, because he's a badass, he's like, fine, we'll deal with that. I'm still not wearing a belt. Now, before they can go off on their adventure, they also have to eat breakfast because it's the most important meal of the day. And J. Edgar the Hoover, he makes some awesome upside pineapple upside down flapjacks, which actually sounds kind of good. I I could kind of go for that. But, ah, and here's the butterflies. Let's get up and dance. Yeah, dance while they're making pancakes and they're singing about how to make pancakes and... These aren't very good instructions on how to actually make a pancake, but just keep moving around and dancing, and and there's the turtle, so time to sit your ass back down, kids! And they're going to go off on their adventure, which, you know, they also are going to need their fish for some reason. Now, I'm kind of wondering why, because, you know, they can't bring the vacuum with them because he's just going to slow them down because he rolls and can't ride a bike but you can bring the fish who needs his fishbowl and he can't fucking move other than swimming in this fishbowl that he's kind of too big for so he doesn't really have any room in there to move anyhow oh no you know I get it this is this is just part of a ploy they're leaving the vacuum cleaner alone with the window so that they can fuck Cause they are down to fuck. I can see it in their eyes. More so the window, because she's actually like a human face inside of a window. So you can see her eyes. She, she's got the come fuck me eyes. And she's gonna get um, fucked by the vacuum. And vacuum's gonna go down and suck her, because it's a vacuum. And I'm just thinking of like this band gravy train and they've got this one song and there's a line like he's sucking me off like a or wait he's sucking my muff like a vacuum cleaner which is a great line and that's what wendy is hoping for even though she's just a window so i don't think she has a muff but she wants that hoover action on her whatever the window equivalent of a clitoris is. So they make their way to this giant tree where the first balloon's at. And it's a really giant tree and Purple Oogie's all excited to climb it because he's a badass! And inside the tree, there's a giant teapot! No, not a teapot! A tree pot! Uh, 
But how are they going to get up there? Luckily, discount Lizzie McGuire. Um, I had to double check because I really did think it was Hillary Duff. And I'm like, uh, is was her career that far in the toilet at this point? No, no, it's just someone who's trying to be Hillary Duff. And I don't know who it is because she doesn't even have like a link on Wikipedia where you can cl click to learn more about her. It's So, I don't know. Maybe Oogie Loves was her... She thought it was going to be her big break, and it broke her instead. And she can never act ever again because she was in the Oogie Loves. But she sings a song that brings a ladder down. And butterflies again! Okay, kids, let's get up and pretend we're climbing the ladder with the Oogies. Yay, turtles, sit your ass back down. So inside the tree pot, Discount Hillary Duff introduces the Oogies to her grandma Dottie who's played by Kolaris Leachman, who I'm guessing they gave her the script and she was like, uh, I'll probably be dead in a few years anyhow, so, ah, eh, fuck it. <laughs> that's all, like, that's all I can think of, like, is that where the budget went, was to paying Kolaris Leachman? <laughs> Just, it must have so, so been a I don't give a fuck type of role for her. But anyhow, she's called Dottie because she loves dots. Her dress is polka dots, and her room is full of dots, and she's got two dots on her, her cheeks. And you know what? She wants to sing a song about dots. And oh, here are the butterflies. Come on, guys, let's get up and dance to this song about dots and dancing in circles. And I love circles, and circles are super awesome. And here's the turtles. Sit your ass back down. So Purple Oogie, he climbs up the branch and he gets the balloon. Yay! But now he's kind of scared to climb back down. Because, you know, he's a badass, but going down, that's kind of scary. Luckily, the balloon starts talking to him and says, You can do it, man! And he's like, Yes, I can do it. And he comes down. And everyone's excited. Like, Yay, you saved the balloon! And he's like, Well, I had help because the balloon talked to me. And Green Oogie is like, what? That's scientifically impossible for a balloon to talk. And, you know, as opposed to the vacuum cleaner and window and pillow and fish that are all talking, the balloon's a step too far for you, Green Oogie, is it? Like, ah, uh, no, like, like, yeah, a window that has a woman's face and sings. Yeah, that's that's scientifically possible. Einstein proved it. But a balloon that talks. No, I that's just a step too far for me. And Discount Hillary Duff is like all happy and Hey the butterflies again, let's dance again and sing. And oh God the, the, no, the turtles are back down, let's sit down. Whew. It's a lot of exercise in this movie. Up and down, up and down, up and down, and oh, Purple Oogie's pants fell down, ha ha ha, we gotta now sing the song, like, your pants fell down, uh, you're a dumbass. I think that's how the song went. Now back at the Oogie Lair, the Windy Window, she's so totally thirsty for the vacuum cleaner, like seriously, she's got those fuck me eyes, she wants to fuck a vacuum. And, I don't know, I want it to happen. I want them to fall in love. And then I want to see how they have sex. Because this is all I can think about. Anyhow, you know, Vacuum Cleaner then sings the Windy Window, what do you see? One, two, three, show it to me. Or whatever the song goes. And where's the next balloon? It's at Milky Marvin's Milkshake Manor. Which is inside of a cow. I don't know if it's a fake cow or if it's a real cow. I can't tell anymore. It's a restaurant where I think they all they serve is milkshakes. So the Oogies go there and... There's the balloon! There's the second balloon! And it's tied to a cow. And they're like, Oh, well, how, how can we get the balloon? And the cow's like, Well, you gotta talk to Milky Marvin. And out comes Milky Marvin, who's played by Chaz Palmateri. Oh, poor Chaz! Dude, you were nominated for an Oscar, and now you're in the Oogie Loves movie? Where did things go wrong for you? 
this actually I think that might be like a more interesting story than the plot of this film is where did these actors go wrong that they ended up in the Oogie Love movie? I I can understand Discount Hillary Duff who was just trying to make her big break. I can understand Cloris Leachman cuz she figured she's going to die and she stopped caring. But Chaz, Chaz, you could do better. So anyhow, Chaz wants to help them, but unfortunately, he's promised the balloon to the winner of the big milkshake drinking contest. And, you know, what's he going to do? Go find another balloon? No, there are no other balloons. These are like the only five balloons in existence in Oogie Land. And so, you know, he's not going to break his promise of it being the, um, the prize for the winner. But... The Oogies, they can join in on the, what are they joining in on? Oh, my head. The Oogies are going to join in on the milkshake drinking contest. Because that's the only way they can get the balloon is if they win the contest. And how do you make a milkshake? Are you wondering? No, you probably weren't wondering. But who cares? Because here's the butterflies. Let's get up and dance while Chaz Palmetary sings to us how a milkshake is made. <laughs> Dancing. It's kind of like a 50s doo-wop number. Right? Make the milk and put the milk and ice cream and milk and milk and... Here's the turtles. Sit your ass down. And so the milkshake contest is going on. And it makes me think of this one time I was in an ice cream eating contest. Which was a really fucking bad idea on my part, being lactose intolerant. But it was kind of like, uh, I was in the mall. Out of nowhere, they had one. And I was like, you know what, I'll try it. How hard can it be to eat an entire, like, half gallon of ice cream? With no hands. Just completely with your face. Let me tell you! <laughs> it is really fucking hard. And I was scooping ice cream out of my nose for like a week. It, I, I was no, I probably was like last place or very, I was very down at the bottom. That was a really fucking hard, hard thing to do. Um, but anyways, the contest goes and the fish wins the contest cause he drinks it cause he drinks like a fish and he wins the contest and he gets the balloon and yay. And oh, the butterflies are back. And dance the oogie love dance we love the oogies and turtles sit your ass down oh i can't take this anymore movie i can't do all this get up and jump and sit back down this is way too much this is way too much so they now have got the balloon and milky morty was it milky morty uh milky marvin yeah that guy Gives them a milkshake to give to their friend for his birthday. The what was the pillow? Yes, the pillow. My mind's a little fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, he gives them a milkshake as a birthday present, and they're off to where's the next balloon? And over at the Oogie Lair, the vacuum cleaner's like, oh no, we gotta find where's the next balloon. And windy window seductively says you know how to ask and maybe maybe it's just in my mind because <clears throat> I'm now sort of Stockholm Syndrome want to bang Wendy the window even though I still haven't figured out how do you have sex with a window and and even less how a va vacuum is but she is so fucking thirsty for him she wants to fuck him. She's got those come on eyes, come fuck me eyes, and she's saying, you know how to ask. And maybe it's just my sick mind, but I, I think they're going to bang. Uh, I mean, not on screen, but you kind of got to read between the lines. So the next balloon is at an airport where a famous singer is getting ready to embark on her world tour. And it's Tony Braxton. <clears throat> and I was thinking, yeah, probably at this point in her career, what else was Tony Braxton going to do, you know? 
And so she's leaving for a world tour and she doesn't want to give up the balloon because the balloon she thinks is a gift from the gods because, I don't know, in Oogie Land, no one else has balloons, I guess. People are weirdly attached to these balloons. Like, these balloons are the greatest fucking thing ever. And I don't know, I've I've never held that deep relationship with a <clears throat> balloon. But by the way, she has a cold, which makes her feel like singing a song. And there's the butterflies! Let's get up from our seats. As Tony Braxton sings a weirdly sensual R&B song about having a cold. <coughs> Excuse me. Ironically, I think I'm kind of getting a cold. No, mine's just allergies, but I had like a fucking five minute sneezing attack before I recorded this part. Um, so I don't know, you might be able to tell like my voice is a little stuffy from just like five minutes ago. Or however long back in this recording it is. But, you know what, I give credit to Tony Braxton for, you know, playing it straight. With this uh, sexy little number about a cold. And, you know, and luckily because the Oogie Loves know how to play instruments, they're her backup band while she sings about a cold. And, hey, turn those again! Sit your ass down! Now, Tony Braxton, she's about to give them the balloon back, but, oh, she sneezed! And it caused the balloon to fly up, and oh no, it's now wrapped around the tail of the plane! What are they going to do? I mean, how are they going to get the balloon? It's not like they can get a ladder or anything. But Green Oogie, he's on the case because he's got those science smarts. And he makes a trampoline out of the luggage. Sure, I don't know. I don't understand, but I guess that's why I'm not the science Oogie. So he jumps and he gets close to the plane and does some weird leaning to I don't know like he lands on a box that's near the tail of the plane and he has to reach out to grab the balloon but apparently he has to do it at the precise angle of the dangle and he manages to get the balloon and the balloon talks to him and says like thank you and Green Oogie's like whoa I guess they're right the balloons do talk it makes no sense at least not any less sensical it's not any more nonsensical than anything else like first of all you're an oogie i don't even know what an oogie is you're just you're like the three puppet people in a whole world of normal people and you've got talking vacuum cleaner and a talking window but no a talking balloon that's just Still one step too far for Green Oogie. He's like, I hate, my mind's gonna explode. So, they got the balloon, so it's time for the Oogie Love song. Here are the butterflies. Let's get up and dance. Oogie Love. Oo -oo 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 Oogie Love. This isn't how the song goes, but it's much better than their version. And, Turtles, sit your ass down. Now they gotta go on to find the fourth balloon. Now back to the Oogie Lair, where J. Edgar Hoover is just going crazy, like, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm gonna spin around. And luckily, the pillow, he's a very sound sleeper, and none of this noise has been going off, and J. Edgar and Wendy the Window are like, huh, I wonder what he's dreaming about. And we get to see in the pillow's thoughts, and he's dreaming about himself sleeping and he that pillow inside his dream is dreaming about himself dreaming about himself and so on and so on and you know that was a great gag back in uh family dog back in like the 80s and whatever happened like they were supposed to make a show based on family dog which was a section from like some movie called like amazing stories was it which I, it was like an anthology film and i don't know if there was more than one part about it but I just remember, there was this cartoon, Family Dog, and the Family Dog just sleeps while everyone else is making noise, and then we finally see what he's dreaming about, and he's dreaming about himself sleeping, and dreaming about himself, and so on. 
So that was a great gag, like, 40 years ago. And thank you, Oogie Loves, for re-bringing it back. And so... But... They have to find, where's the fourth balloon? So J. Edgar Hoover's, like, asking, like, Wendy, window, where's the fourth balloon? And she's like, sugar, you know how to ask. Oh, man, like, the sexual tension between the two is so palpable. I'm sure that's not how that word's pronounced. But... You know, he starts singing the song like, One, two, one, two, three, windy window, will you blow me? Uh, well, I don't think those are the actual words. But we see where the next balloon is, and it's tied around a truck, like a big tractor trailer truck. Oh boy. Um, so I'm guessing they're going to have to e either give ass, gas, or grass to get the balloon. So the Oogies go to the truck trailer, the truck stop where the trucker trailer is with the balloon yes that's what i was trying to say and the truck belongs to a bow-legged cowboy played by carrie always no they dragged you into this too i don't is that how it's pronounced Eloise, elves really wesley from the princess bride and also the bad guy from twister and, no, he's had a lot of fucking, like, awesome roles, and I love him. And I don't know why he's in this. How did they drag him into this? They must have, like, kidnapped him and drugged him, and that's how he's like, ah, the only, it's, oh, I know, it was like a Saw situation. He woke up one day, and he was, like, tied, like, handcuffed to the producer's house, and he's like, there's only one way out. Either you saw your leg off, or you star in the Oogie Loves. And he tried to saw his foot off, and it didn't work, so he went with the Oogie Loves as the last resort. That is, that's my headcanon for why Carrie always is in this. Um, but he's not really bow-legged. He just likes to, like, wobble as he walks. And then he's like, come walk this way. And as he's wobbling, the other Oogie Loves... They're wobbling too. Like, ah, another classic joke. Which, you know, Young Frankenstein, that's like 50 years ago now, isn't it? Maybe. Uh, it should be. It's older than me, at the very least. So they wobbled their way to. I wasn't really paying attention. I think they go inside the trailer, and it's a giant house, and he's like, well, I just love bubbles. So let me sing a song about bubbles. Here's the butterflies. Come on, guys. Let's get up and dance. As he does a song about bubbles. And you know what? I'll say, like, I gave Tony Braxton credit for going all sexy, going all in on her song. I'm going to give Carrie always double credit because I don't know what the fuck he's doing in this song, but it is awesome. Like, the faces he makes is, like, so worth the price of admission. Um... It's like, uh, like 48 minutes, 48-ish minutes into the film. So, just fast forward straight to that. Because <laughs> everything else in the film so far is not worth seeing. But this song, and the, you know, you could probably just fucking like YouTube, like Carrie Elwes song dance number, Oogie Loves. Something like that. I'm sure you can find it. It's spectacular i cannot describe it he has like the most amazing goofy faces he's like all in on this what the hell like these people maybe that was also part of it like you want out of this trap you're gonna act like you love this film and he's such a good actor you could never guess that he had read the script beforehand or maybe he hadn't read the script. Actually, that's more likely <laughs> that he did this movie because he hadn't read the script. But, oh, I can I just cannot praise enough, like, these weird, goofy faces. Like, this is where it sucks being an audio podcast, because I can't... Well, I wouldn't be able to do the faces to begin with. But, you know, if I could show you a clip... Of him doing face fall down. But however will they get that balloon down? Luckily there's a puffin bird. 
Uh, you know those birds, they're like penguins, except colorful beaks and they can fly. But not this puffin! She can't fly because she's got a bad back. But Yellow Oogie, she's like, well, I'll talk to her in a squawk language. And they go, squawk, squawk, squawk. And then, let's sing the song to help motivate her to fly. And they sing, and squawky, squawk, squawk, squawky. No, 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 no. Don't stand up. We did not get the butterflies. We did not get the butterflies. You are not allowed to stand up. Stay in your seat. And so they squawk this song. And... It gives her the courage to go fly up the balloon, and she gets the balloon, and it's like, all right, yeah. So they're all happy, so it's time for the Oogie Love song. Now we've got the butterflies. Now you can stand up and dance. Oogie Love, Oogie Love. You can't get Oogie Love without an Oogie Glove. Seriously, I should be writing these songs, because my rendition is so much better. And after, like, 30 seconds of the... Oogie Love song. Turtles, sit your ass back down. What was the point of that? <laughs> I got to dance for 30 seconds? That's a fucking tease, you fucking Oogie Loves. Now there's one more balloon to go. So, back to the Oogie Lair, where J. Edgar Hoover is just so fucking macking it on this windy window. Like, I... They are gonna so fuck if they haven't already. Because he's like brushing her drapes and literally drapes like not like it's supposed to be like her hair but they're actual drapes so i assume afterwards he's gonna go down on her carpet as well uh I, you knew i was going there right like you i had to he was brushing the drapes like he was caressing the drapes and she was she was into it and so I have no choice but to make a joke about the carpet. But, you know, enough of that. Please, really, enough of that. I'm getting really, like, sick of thinking about a vacuum cleaner in a window fucking. So, but he does the song again to, Windy window, what do you see? Please shave your carpet for me. And she shows where the last balloon is. And it's tied to a windmill. Oh no. Be careful, Oogie Loves. As our former president told us, windmills cause cancer. Um, well, we get a Don Quixote joke in here. You know, they're going after a windmill. You know, Sancho Panza. Um, although there was, before Don Quixote, or before, not before Don Quixote coming out, but before I knew what Don Quixote was, there was this, great Saturday morning cartoon called Don Coyote and his sidekick was Sancho Panda and when I found out like this was based on Don Quixote and Sancho Panza I was like what the fuck and I never bothered reading it cause you know the main character is not a coyote I'm not gonna read a book if the main character is not a coyote so they arrive to the windmill but there's a llama there telling them you know they can't run across the grass and some other rules. Basically, there's no way for them to get to this windmill. Except to ride the giant sombrero. And no, that's literally a giant sombrero comes and it's being piloted or lived in by Christopher Lloyd and Jamie Presley. Who I feel I must point out in case you didn't know, neither of them are Mexican. And Jamie Presley's accent is kind of Russian. So maybe she's supposed to be a Russian. Because she's got blonde hair. So blonde hair and a bad Russian accent. So maybe she's meant to be a Russian who's living in a sombrero. And I'm the racist one for, you know, thinking a Russian can't live in a sombrero. I, you know what? I'm going to be open-minded and say... Russians can live in sombreros if they want. Christopher Lloyd, I'm not sure what he's supposed to be. Because he doesn't talk, he just bangs on his bongos. And I guess that's supposed to be his way of talking. Um, Boy, that this is going to get really annoying really quick. And Jamie Presley, I can understand being in this movie. But Christopher Lloyd? 
yeah, I can totally understand him being in this movie as well. Uh, you know, I love Christopher Lloyd, but you look at his IMDb page, he is not very picky. He He's like a kinder, gentler, less skeezy Eric Roberts. You give him a paycheck, and he'll say yes. Okay, I don't think she's supposed to be Russian. Uh, she's supposed to be Spanish, I think. And, I mean, like, from Spain, Spanish. Which, to me, seems kind of more racist, because sombrero's kind of a Mexican thing. So, I feel a Spaniard living in a sombrero is more offensive than a Russian living in a sombrero. Just my opinion. Just, but, she's got a red dress, and, God, that accent is bad. But, you know, no one has ever hired Jamie Presley for her accent. It's how hot she looks in that red dress. And she's doing, like, salsa dancing and other kinds of dancing, while Christopher Lloyd, he's playing mariachi music on his bongos. I don't know where the rest of the mariachi music is coming from. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the butterflies are here, so let's get up off our seats and dance, because dancing is the only way to get the sombrero moving to get it to the windmill. And so they're dancing, but it's slow, because the dancing's too slow. So they have to dance even quicker. And Christopher Lloyd, he puts down his bongos, and he starts doing all sorts of dancing, like the Charleston. I don't know why he's doing the Charleston. I don't know what that has to do with mariachi music. But... You know, I'm not super well versed in mariachi music, so there could very well be a Charleston like dance for mariachi. I'm, like I said, I'm keeping open minded. If a Russian could live in a giant sombrero, which is not happening in this movie, but in my mind canon, a Russian is living in this giant sombrero rather than a really bad Spaniard. Is Spaniard offensive? Who cares? I mean, what? There's like two of you listening to this. And I apologize if either of you find it offensive. My, This film is breaking me. Uh, yeah, every film breaks me. I know I say that every film, but this one's taking me to the limit. Oh, hey, there's the turtles. Let's sit our ass down. And the sombrero has made it to the windmill. But how will they get to the top of the windmill, though? Purple Oogie, he's all like, I'll climb it, because, you know, I'll climb anything. But Green Oogie, the science guy, remember, he's, I guess, calculated this all in his head, like, ah, it's going to be too dangerous, you can't climb it. So, how are they going to do it? Luckily, there's a tulip. And Christopher Lloyd, with his magical flute, makes the tulip grow. And so they hitch a ride onto the tulip to get to the top of the windmill. But, oh, they're still a little too short to reach the balloon. What do they do? Oh, hey, yeah, there's that fish that we've been lugging around and has done nothing but just complain. And I really haven't brought it up much because he's just annoying. But now he's a plot point. And so Jamie Presley's going to throw him up there. But he's like, he's really scared. He's like, can I have a kiss for good luck? And she's like, of course. And she kisses him, which makes Christopher Lloyd jealous. Or, you know, just, I don't know. Is I'm not sure if he's Jamie Presley's husband or father. Because it is quite the age gap. So I don't want to presume one way or the other. Just that Christopher Lloyd isn't too happy seeing... Jamie Presley kiss a fish and so she throws the fish up there and still seems a little too short can he reach it so we've all gotta like cheer him on and you can do it stupid fish you can do it stupid fish and Jamie Presley she starts chanting along too you can do it stupid fish and Christopher Lloyd finally speaks and he's also trying to cheer him on like you can do it stupid fish do I have to, like, clarify that they're not actually saying Stupid Fish? They just say the Stupid Fish's name. But it would have been a much better chant if it was, You can do it, Stupid Fish. And that gives them just a little... 
push that they need, and he gets the balloon. And yes, the Oogie Loves have all five balloons. The movie's up. The movie's not over yet. Oh, well, I guess they gotta, you know, now take the balloons over to the party, and hopefully the vacuum and the window have stopped fucking by the time they get home. Because the Oogie Loves do not need to see that. Now that they're safely on the ground and happy, Purple Oogie's pants fall down again! Oh, ha 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 ha! Let's sing the Pick Up Your Pants song, because you're not a degenerate inner city hoodlum. No, I don't think that's how the song goes. But it should have gone that way. And so, you know, as they do every time they save one of the balloons, it's time for the Oogie Love song! Here come the butterflies! Get up up here! And before you know it, the turtles and whatever sit back down. You know what? No, fuck you, turtles. I am not sitting back down. I got up from my seat. I am not sitting back down for 20-second Oogie Love song. No! I... Okay, I'm tired. I'm sitting back down. So, they're off on their way because, oh, it's getting dark. And, you know, they spent all day getting the balloons. You know, the little pillow guy probably would have been fine with one balloon. Probably could have just gotten away with getting one balloon and then get back in time to throw his party. And Jamie Preston and Christopher Lloyd say goodbye and wish them good luck. And Christopher Lloyd speaks. And now I'm back to questioning, are they Spanish or are they Russian? Because his accent is somewhere in between, and also not anywhere near any of either of them. I'm not sure what his accent was, but it wasn't Mexican. So he lives in a sombrero, even though he's not Mexican. But that's okay. Just how like non-Mexicans can eat tacos, non-Mexicans can live in sombreros. And so the Oogies are on their way back home with the balloons because it's going to be party time. Now the Oogies are riding their bikes home, but oh no, it's windy. It's very windy. And I'm not talking about windy the window as I'm talking about the wind is blowing and you got to face the wind like Christopher Cross. And I don't know that he has some song with the wind, right? Face the wind or ride the wind. I don't know. Might not even be Christopher Cross. I'm just... There's a lot of wind, is what I'm saying. And, oh no, the balloons fly away. Oh. An entire day wasted. Like I said, you should have just grabbed the one balloon, called it a day. But, luckily, since these are magical talking balloons, they let them know, like, there is a way to get them back, because there's one force that's greater than the wind. And it's love. Like, aww. Hey, here's the butterflies. Let's get up! Because it's time to blow kisses at the w balloons. Because we got to show the balloons that we love them. And if we love them hard enough, they'll pop. I mean, they'll come down. And come down they do. And it's obvious, right? They, We all loved the balloons, and the balloons are back. And here's the turtles. Sit your ass back down. And I hope that's it. I hope that's the end of all the calamity and adversar adversity that the Oogie Loves are going to endure. Please, just get home and give me a happy ending. And yes, I mean, jerk me off, you Oogie Gloves, because I, don't I deserve that for sitting through this movie? You know, how many podcasts out there will just... Talking about a children's movie starts requesting a hand job at the end of the children's movie. Surprisingly, a lot of podcasts will talk about that. So they get home just in time for the little pillow baby, I guess. He seems kind of like a babyish because he doesn't really talk. He's just like, ah, 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 ah. all that just gibberish that babies say. And it's just in time for him to wake up and they give him his presents and his balloons that are gonna sing to him and here's the butterflies let's stand up and dance for the balloon singing the birthday song not that birthday song says you may or may not be aware happy happy birthday is a copyrighted song 
So if you use it, you have to pay royalties. So it's a completely made up song about happy birthdays. And yeah, nah, nah, nah. hey, the turtles sit back down. And oh, no, this movie still isn't over. Because Wendy has to have special messages from all the friends that the Oogie Loves made on their adventure. And they all wish happy birthday. And at least we get to see Carrie Eloise again. Because I don't know what the fuck's up with this cowboy, but it is awesome. Someone do a spinoff movie based on that cowboy. I want that. I will go see that, actually. I will pay... Well, I won't pay good money, but I will pay some money to see a movie spinoff about the wobbly cowboy. Someone make that happen. And, you know, there's only one thing left to do. The Oogie Dance. And here's the butterflies. Let's stand back up and we're going to dance. And the song just won't end, so I'm just going to fast forward. And credits roll. But the turtles never came out to tell me to sit back down. Which I guess, you know, what's the point of sitting back down now? Because the movie's over. So I have to leave the theater. So, yeah, I guess I will stay standing up. But unfortunately for me, who I'm not watching in the movie theater, I'm stuck standing up because the turtles aren't here to tell me to sit down. Oh, that's the problem with these movies that are made for interac interactive cinema experience. They just don't translate so well to the home video screen. Although, I think someone should... They should try to, you know, do a revival and make this the new, like, Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> With adults who are blitzed out of their mind going and singing and dancing along to this movie. Let's do it. I, how do... How much would it cost for me to get a copy... <laughs> of this movie and just like run it and rent out a movie theater and run it and just have drunk people come and sing and dance along to this this is an idea i don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea but it is an idea well now that i'm feeling some sort of stockholm syndrome with the fucking oogie loves now and i need more oogies there actually is more so apparently this was based on a TV show called My Bed Bugs. And so there's a couple episodes up on YouTube. I'm only going to watch one. Unless my Stockholm Syndrome is like in super overdrive. But no, <laughs> I'm going to try to stick to just one. And I can't even promise I'm going to make it through this entire episode. But yeah, this show is called My Bed Bugs, and this episode is called Rock Stars. And so I guess... It's the origin of the Oogies becoming a rock band, probably. Because they played their rock music oh so well in that one scene. So, go Oogies! Th this is available on YouTube. The Bedbugs show. Uh, did I mention the Oogie Loves was on Tubi? But I generally... What's the point of mentioning where I see these films? Because... You know, there's the possibility that when you listen to this episode, it's not even going to be available anymore where I watched it. And plus the whole point of this podcast is to stop you from watching these films. So, but if you absolutely 100% need to watch My Bed Bugs, it's on YouTube. There's two episodes and I'm watching the Rockstar episode. So we've got the opening credits letting us know that we're in Bugville because they're not Oogies, they're Bed Bugs. And they pretty much look like the Oogies, except they've got, like, little bug antennas. And Purple Oogie is blue in this. So, at some point when making the film, they decided, well, let's lose the bug antennas, and Blue Boy is purple. Because, I don't know. I'm not even going to speculate why they changed it. But all our friends are here. There's the vacuum cleaner, and the fish, and the bed pillow... Because they're bed bugs. So I think it's like a pajama party. It seems like it's just going to be. Because they're bed bugs. So they're just going to hang out in their bed. But no Windy the Window. Oh man. I I was falling in love with Windy the Window. What am I going to do? Like you got rid of the best character. 
And now there's not going to be any sexual tension for the vacuum cleaner. So the Oogies are listening to some music on the radio, the Slugbugs, which Yellow Oogie has all their CDs. And, oh, by the way, they're going to be on the Ed Sullivan Show at 1. I don't know if it's 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. Um, I mean, I would think p.m., but they're in their pajamas, so I don't know if they've been... Yeah, I'm falling asleep. I'm going to go sleep with the bed bugs. But whatever, if it's a.m. or p.m., I don't know, but it's in five minutes. So they turn on, and the slug bugs are basically the Beatles if the Beatles were just John and Ringo. Um, yeah, I guess they couldn't afford enough like costumes and fake puppet cost- <laughs> fake uh, bug suits for four. So that's just the two of them. And... The Oogies are like, oh, this is awesome. Hey, let's form our own band. Yeah, because then we'll get all the chicks and all the tail and all the coke we can snort. Okay, maybe I'm projecting a little on them, and they just want to play the music. And the coke and horse is it's just what happens. It's not the reason they get into music, but it's the reason they stay in music. So luckily, the Oogies have instruments. Including a full stack for the guitar. Like, what the fuck? The Oogie's parents, like, go out and buy him a full stack amp? Like, who who gets, like, a full stack before they've been playing for some time and, you know, can afford a full stack amp? I call shenanigans. So they try to play, but they're very loud and... This upsets J. Edgar Hoover vacuum cleaner. And he comes and he teaches them how to be a band. And he helps them learn how to play a song. And they're all happy and they're singing the song. Well, the Oogies are singing. Well, the vacuum kind of sings too. He's singing the instructions. And it was a fun song. But now it's nap time. And the Oogies don't want to go to nap. They want to continue rocking out. And the vacuum cleaner's like, even rock stars have to nap. Obviously, the vacuum cleaner has not heard of speed. Don't need sleep. Just fucking snort some shit and we're gonna rock out all night. But they all agree to take a nap because the vacuum cleaner tells them, you know, after you've had your nap and you're all rusted up, you can go back to singing and you'll be even better. And they're like, all right. So they go and they have dream and you know what? As far as I'm concerned, it's over. They went to bed. Show's over. This podcast is over. VelvetL at Hotmail.com or leave a comment in the comment section. And please return. I hope I did not scare you off with the Oogie Loves. They scared me. And I'm still not sure I'm over my Stockholm Syndrome. I am probably going to have nightmares about the Oogies. I I love you guys. And I want to thank the Living Brain Dead for providing the official theme song for Velvet Owl Watches Movies So You Don't Have To. It's called Never Fuck With Cat Girls, and you can get it at livingbraindead.com, which you should totally do. They are not paying me for this, so I shill them out of my love for the music.